New York Community Bank. This is one of New York City's oldest banks, and this year, the stock is down 66%. In the past year, it's not really doing so great, but at the very least, it does like to hover around the $9 to $11 region. But then, bam, prices suddenly started dropping. What in the world is going on? What is happening to New York that's causing this Armageddon? Well, it's pretty simple. New York Community Bank is now under the water. They have a lot of debt and a lot of their valuable assets are now down the drain. They're also delaying the annual shareholders meeting by two weeks to organize things. Not a great look at all. And the main culprit is going to be New York City and also their recent rent stabilization laws. In fact, rent stabilization laws are so tough that many of these rent stabilized apartments are now basically worthless. Now, a third of the entire New York City housing stock is rent stabilized apartments. And they're frankly good investments if you do them right. So let me just explain to you guys what in the world's happening in New York City and why in the world is New York Community Bank just down in the gutter right now with their stock down 67%. You betcha that other hedge fund and other banks in New York City are also taking humongous hits. In fact, $75 billion in market cap just got wiped off of New York City real estate. Rent stabilization buildings in New York City are special because the rent is capped at a certain amount, usually way below market value. So that means investors can go in and buy rent stabilized apartments for an extremely cheap price. Your buddy bought a Brooklyn townhouse or condo for let's say five to $10 million, you could get yourself a rent stabilization building for a small fraction of that. I've seen condo prices listed for like a million dollars in a regular market and rent stabilization is like 300 grand. So it's super duper cheap, but the downside is you can't actually hike the rents up at all. So now New York City bans people from hiking up rents and rent stabilization apartments. Now this is due to the fact that there's just rising amount of slumlords. A lot of slumlords actually buy these apartments and they leave it like crap. Okay, no repairs, nothing. And it's like roaches and rats running around. And each time you get a tenant turnover, they get to increase the rent by 20%. So let's say like 10 tenants go through the apartment because it sucks so much. So you constantly have new tenants coming in and out. You eventually could raise the rent all the way back up to the original market value. So a lot of the slumlords do that, right? But majority of landlords are pretty decent. They keep the prices okay. And yes, they hike up rents occasionally. But New York City is punishing the general population who invests in rent stabilization apartments. And like I said in numerous videos, New York City should always find a decent middle ground instead of fully siding one or the other. Obviously, siding 100% of the landlord is terrible. But at the same time, siding 100% with the tenant is also terrible because now you have entire corporations and banks literally falling apart. And many people are begging New York City government to let them hike their rents because mortgage rates are so high. Interest rates are at the roof. Insurance premiums in New York City just hit an all new time high. Property tax is increasing. So some of these rent stabilized apartments are actually selling for pennies on the dollar. And I'm serious when I tell you guys some of these buildings used to sell for like 30 million and now they're being listed for like 800 grand. That is actually a real thing. So $75 billion is now wiped off of the New York City rent stabilization apartment complex. And like I said, tougher rent laws are really behind the trouble of New York City Community Bank. Now, many people also are wondering why in the world would I ever invest in these? Yes, these buildings now suck. They used to be great, but now they suck. And now a lot of investments who thought about going to New York City are now going to places like Florida. Okay, when New York Community Bank is delaying their annual shareholders in two weeks, it doesn't give investors confidence. Other hedge funds are taking massive hits and other small community banks in the New York City region are taking massive hits as well. Now, when can landlords actually hike up rents a little bit just to make some profit? Well, until 2027. Now it's 2024. I'm not really sure if these buildings could last another three years, considering that inflation is going up and we could be seeing another massive rent hike. New York City is about to kiss its entire real estate situation goodbye. This is one of the most terrible things I've ever seen. And yes, I do believe slumlords should be held accountable for really bad buildings. At the same time, really think and look into some of these buildings. Not every landlord is bad, right? And in fact, most buildings are actually kept pretty decently. So punishing everyone is causing massive amounts of money to flow outside of New York City. New York City is becoming an empty ground. 
investments are gone. Hedge funds are gone. Even freaking Goldman Sachs is moving in a huge part of the building to Miami. Nobody wants to stay in New York City. It's so anti-business, it's not that great anymore. 